Hi, everyone. The book that I have for you guys today is called Outside, Inside, written and illustrated by Lei Win Pham. Outside, Inside, Lei Win Pham. Something strange happened on an unremarkable day just before the season changed. Everybody who was outside went inside. Everyone, everywhere, all over the world. Everyone just went inside, shut their doors, and waited. Well, almost everyone. Some people needed to be where they needed to be. Outside, the sky was quiet, but the wind still blew and birds kept singing. Raccoons came out and squirrels played in the streets, but the cars stayed away. The world felt a little different. Inside, we baked and cooked, made music and watched TV. We read and played games. Some of us worked a little, some of us worked a lot, and some of us couldn't work at all. We all felt a little different. Outside, there were fences, both real and pretend. Swings sat still and slides were lonely. Bells didn't ring and halls were empty. We had birthdays without parties, shared words without sounds, and reached each other without touching. The world was changing a tiny bit outside. Inside, we waited and we worried, we laughed and we cried, and we tried to breathe. We made things together and did things alone. We hoped and prayed and wished. We were all changing a tiny bit inside. Outside, the world kept growing. Inside, we kept growing too. So why did we all go inside? Well, there were lots of reasons, but mostly because everyone knew it was the right thing to do. On the outside, we are all different. But on the inside, we're all the same. And we remember that soon spring would come. Inside and outside. Author's note. The winter of 2019 seemed much like any other. There were holidays and family gatherings, school projects due, and work deadlines. People took trains and buses to work and planes zigzagged across the skies. We were out and about talking, eating, and living as we always had, until something changed. A virus had entered the world, gradually making its way from city to city, country to country, continent to continent. Almost overnight, everything that had once seemed normal to us was no longer so. As one, as one by one, sorry, as one by one to prevent spreading the virus, nearly everyone everywhere went inside and closed their doors. It was difficult to process how quickly things changed. There was a sense suddenly that wherever we were in the world, we were cut off. Everyone stayed home and neighbors next door felt millions of miles apart. 
The streets and skies seemed eerily quiet and impossibly empty. The world outside felt different. Inside, we felt different too. People with immunity disorders, health issues, and the elderly, including my own mother undergoing chemotherapy and my father at his nursing home, were in great danger. We worried about getting sick or getting our loved ones sick. Some of us couldn't work. Some of us couldn't go to school, even online. Some of us couldn't be there for our families when they needed us. Many businesses closed, some temporarily and some permanently. We had no idea what was going to happen next. It was as if the whole world was holding its breath, waiting. But not everyone stayed inside. Doctors and nurses, first responders to this pandemic, were on the front lines. With few resources and even less preparation, these incredible heroes rose to the challenge and threw themselves into battling the virus, often putting their own lives at risk. Grocery store employees, delivery people, city workers, and other essential workers compromised their own safety to keep our world running. There were long lines at food banks serving struggling families hard hit by the lockdown. In those first few weeks of quarantine, I started sketching moments from each day. It was my way of coping with events as they unfolded. On walks around our neighborhood, I began to notice small things. Neighbors smiled beneath masks and greeted each other on the street. Teddy bears began appearing in windows for children to hunt for. Paper hearts decorated doors and fences. Sidewalks were vibrant with chalk drawings of rainbows and signs on lawns read, we are in this together and we can do this. Neighbors shopped for those unable to, shopped for those unable to and left groceries on doorsteps. Every evening at the same hour, people stepped onto porches or stoops and cheered for those on the front lines a moment of the day when we were all united in love. Around the world, empty parks saw a resurgence of wildlife as animals ventured out undisturbed by humans. Without planes and cars, the air seemed cleaner. During this difficult time, people reached across the void to find one another and come together. So much had changed, but those struggles, rather than bringing us down, instead brought out the best in many of us. As I write these words, Masked people of every color fill the streets to fight against racism and to right the injustices of the world. They face the double danger of contracting the virus and having violence brought against them for speaking their minds. Nearly every face painted in this book is inspired by a real person, from people in the news to family, friends, and neighbors. The images inside the hospital are based on real events, a woman giving birth while suffering from the virus, an older woman isolated from her family, celebrating her birthday with kindly nurses the day before she died. The grateful man showing through the hospital window his love for the nurses who saved his wife's life. Stories that moved me found their way into my drawings. One of the most difficult spreads for me to create was the one explaining why we sacrificed as we did. It features real people who were in most danger during this time some who have either survived or succumbed to the virus, and includes friends who have lost loved ones. Knowing that every character is based on someone real gives me both joy and pain. My career has been devoted to drawing the world as I would like it to be, my version of a happy world. This is the first time that I have cataloged the world as it is. It is a recording of the daily acts of kindness and humanity made by everyday people. And there was so much happening, so many good deeds, that I simply couldn't find space in these pages to record it all. This book is a time capsule of our moment in history when the world came together as one to do the right thing. Win Fab, June 2020. This book is humbly and gratefully dedicated to those first responders and essential workers whose sacrifices and dedication to life is immeasurable. The world is in your debt. Le Win Pham has illustrated more than 100 books for children, including the Caldecott Honor book, Bear Came Along by Richard T. Morris and the best-selling Princess in Black series by Shannon and Dean Hale. She is the co-creator, along with Shannon Hale, of the best-selling best graphic memoirs, Real Friends and Best Friends. 
Her own books include The Bear Who Wasn't There and Big Sister, Little Sister. A graduate of the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, Le Win lives in Los Angeles with her husband and two sons. Thank you for listening.